Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to Box to Battlefield. And as you know, we've been working on our King Tiger. Uh, we've moved along pretty well with the um, with the turret. I have put decals on one side, and this morning I will show you putting the decals on the other side. Um, and in between the last video and and, and um, this morning, all I've done, other than apply the decals, is harmonize the color a little bit. Now, what does that exactly mean? When, when you put the three colors on, they're very sharp in color against one another. Very, um, um, you know, they're, they're not massaged. They're not, so they have to get down to 35th scale. So when putting the three colors on, you're at one to one scale and there's very sharp edges and very vibrant um, color. So in the past, I, I've talked about harmonizing, but let me just briefly go over uh, for one second what I did. Just get the color. What I just did is I, I took XF60 Tamiya and added about, oh, I would say about 95% at least thinner, maybe even higher than that, maybe 98% thinner um, to that color. And then put the tank down and just mist it over from about six inches away all over the whole model. And you can see how um, thin layer that I used because here where I'm going to put the, the shell hits and everything like that and the damage to the tank, you can't even see that the yellow had creeped in. Now I also avoided it a little bit too. But by harmonizing the colors, they, it just gets them into the 35th scale sort of um, place where we want to be. And you can see how it's changed over the past week. It's not as sharp. Um, you can also take the same color and add just a, a nip of white and, and do the process as far as harmonizing goes. And, 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 uh, and I think um, most modelers do that. I think most of you out there do it anyway. I just had to uh, mention it this morning because we've, we've moved on a little bit. Um, I've added decals to one side of it and this morning I'll add and show how I added the, or going to add the decals to the other side. The other thing I'll cover this morning is a little bit of chipping. There, this is the high mark of the tank of course. We're probably 10 feet off the ground so stones and, and what have you, heavy material, um, scraping the paint off is, is not likely as opposed to say the fenders and the wheels and what have you. So I have chipped um, just a little bit, but I'll go over the chipping um, on the rear deck of the tank where um, the crew is going to drop hammers and they're going to work on the engine and, and, and you know, they're going to have their tools out. They take them out of the toolbox like we all do at the work shed and they just spill out and on our in our case they're going to spill it on the rear deck of the tank. So. Those areas are going to be chipped a little more, and, and I'm going to um, I'm going to show how to do that. So, like I say, the chipping upstairs here um, in the top of the turret is caused by explosions nearby that throw brick and throw stones and what have you up on top of the tank. You know, all those near miss shots um, going under. Uh, um, buildings and, and all that sort of stuff through now the King Tigers aren't into doing that sort of stuff these are an offensive weapon that um, doesn't get into that sort of combat like a Brumbar say so there's gonna be less scratches on way up here on the top of the tank they um, they're also 50 to 60 tons so they can't um, you know they can't be rumbling through apartment and housing complexes and what have you like that. They're, they're ineffective. They, for one, have a long, long barrel on them. So to swing it left or right in an emergency case, if they're wrapped around, uh, you know, cityscapes and stuff, they're not an effective piece of equipment. So, um, so scratching up on the top of this turret is not like, say, the Brumbar is. Um, 
so we just have to be wise as to what model we're doing. Let's not put scratches on tanks um, just because we like the neat effect that scratches give. We, we have to focus in on our the environment in which this tank actually operates, which, which is out in the fields and, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, don't go crazy with the scratches. This, you know, we've all seen those models that look like they've bumped into a tent caterpillar nesting and, and, and the scratches are everywhere, top and bottom and all that sort of stuff. That's nonsense. Um, but anyway, let, let's get back to the deckling and then we can get onto a the rear deck of the tank will we'll give the uh, rear deck of the tank a filter and then um, that sort of stuff. So we've got a lot to cover this morning. Um, Dave Forrest will be by as well to have a chat about doing the AMX 13. He's going to cover the tracks and what have you. So, so we've got a lot to cover. So let's just get at it. I will um, show you guys how I deckle. All right, fantastic. Okay, so you don't you don't need a lot of um, things to pull this off. A, a straight pin certainly is going to help. A ruler to position it on the turret properly. A little pencil to mark, and I use a pencil as opposed to anything else, simply because if it um, leaves a little mark there, it just looks like a silvering. So and now, obviously, on Zimrit, we're going to try to hide this if if I have. To accidentally leave a mark there but one of the um, things that you have to do if you're building an aircraft and what have you uh, automobile and a lot of tanks say that don't have Zimmerd on them is to give your tank either a gloss coat underneath the decal a semi gloss coat um, I don't that operation is is correct I just don't practice it I, I just find that sometimes if you get it all glossy, it's hard to bring it back. So, one of the ways that I apply decals, or the only way, is really, um, at most I'm going to use to me a number 35, which is X35, and that's a semi-gloss uh, coating. And um, put that on your turret, and then just take your straight pin, and just give your decal some... few holes and that's just to cut down on the silvering so what that the, what those little holes do is um, they allow all the air to come out from behind the decal and when you're gonna put decals on Zimrit um, you're gonna have to this isn't a process that's gonna take 10 minutes and we're out there, there's a little operation here so put a few holes in your decal And again, these are exit holes for the air to get out from behind. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that as I apply. So one of the common numbers for a German tank is to have a three-digit number on it. Uh, usually beginning with one, two, or three. But obviously photographic references will show that um, that's only a guideline. There companies one two and three company but but uh, obviously we've seen ss markings and waffen uh ss tanks that have much larger numbers so so do a little bit of research now when you're doing a german number or any three digit number it, it doesn't matter which one always start with the middle number so the first number you're going to apply is the number one if you just apply the number two, you're gonna you can easily be off center in the end. But if you make the number one, in this case two one four, if you make this number one square and true to the center of where it's to sit down on the tank, um, the rest of the numbers are gonna line up obviously pretty square. So first number I'll put together is the number one. And don't forget, I'm dealing with a Zimmerated pattern here that has battle damage on it. So I'm going to have to sort of put this on and then with an X-Acto knife take part of it away. 
due to the damage. So center it out. So in our case, the turret is roughly four inches across. So we'll hit number two, we'll find number two. In other words, two inches across. And it falls right there. So just mark it, because what happens is you put your deco in the water, you're putting your microsol on, and then you lose sight of where the center of the model is. So mark it. And I just put my, uh, helps if you have water in your dish, gentlemen. Here's the dish with water in it. Pair of tweezers, dip it in. Now my water is warm water, a little bit above room temperature. that sit there for a minute let's get our visuals up and down an inch and a half so three quarters so we're talking right in here somewhere pretty close just mark it slightly double check always measure twice cut once Famous carpenter rule. Okay. Take a, uh, put a little bit of saw on there. Microsol is a product that's been around, I don't know, 30 years, I guess. It's always been reliable for me. Put it inside the Zimmerit. And you want the ones, see I've already put the one on this side. Try to get the ones to line up um, opposite each other. Okay, so here's the scoop with this one it's not quite ready to roll yet there we go Hard to make these decals obviously move. There we go. With Zimmerit. But anyway, we'll manage. Just finicky. Okay, so once we get it in position, and it looks pretty stable there now. We're dealing with Zimmer here, so a little bit of extra mic microsol will help. And I don't use microset very much, but microsol I use. But now here's where those holes come into play. You have to take a uh, paper towel, and don't use a Kleenex or toilet paper. You have to use a paper towel. And the ones that you can get at Starbucks or uh, Tim Hortons, napkins or uh, that sort of stuff, they work quite well for this. They're durable, extremely durable. And what I'm doing here is I'm pushing against the model pretty firmly, but you have to have the napkin damp. If you don't have it damp, the deco can easily come off in your hand, so, or onto your napkin. So. Keep your uh, the napkin pretty wet. 
and I'm not sure if um, if this was all glossy, this deco wouldn't go on any better than it is going on now, simply because we're covered with zimmered here, and, and obviously gloss paints are to give it a, an extremely smooth finish. We're not going to have that no matter what we do. We're dealing with Zimmered here. So I think that Microsol or your favorite uh, um, decal solution is, is going to help you more than any gloss coat or semi-gloss coat. So what I'm going to do, gentlemen, is I'm just going to um, moisten up the number four, which will go next, off here to the right, and um, dip that in the water and get it moving. And it helps also, gentlemen, this, this is a little piece of foam that's been cut out for a model railroading process, but I use it here to support our little tank. Number one, it's not going to hurt and scar the, the paint job because it's nice and soft. And um, you're, you're always going to need a little support system. So now let me just flip this around and you can see how the number 214 has fallen into place nicely there. And we'll put the number four on and then we'll figure out what we're going to do about number two and um obviously we're going to cut you know two-thirds of the number two away before we go ahead but let's get number four in place and then we'll uh and you see now it's very easy you have a guideline you have the number one here helping out you know it, it's going to be your uh put a little bit of microsol on it's going to help you position the number four and the number two, so it's easy to do. Just make sure that, like I say, in a three-digit number like the Germans have quite often, put the, the center number on first. All right, so as you guys know, quite often these things are can be a little cockeyed, so just straighten them out like so. And then we take our tissue that's um, moistened with just water and push it down firmly against the tank. And as you can see, it's a little cockeyed again. The number four is not sitting square. It's going to be hard to loosen that up, but let's just try. That is pretty close. It's off just a hair down here. But if we can get it to move a little bit. Now I'm just putting on water here, letting it flow underneath. Okay, so what's going to happen with the number two, because it's, it gets into our damaged area of the tank, I've cut it oversized. I've cut a little bit of the corner off of number two, but um, we'll just make sure that's ready to slide. It's not quite ready, but um, what we'll do is moving forward on this number. Yeah, it's not quite ready yet. A little bit of Microsoft on our locale. Is what I'll do is take an extremely sharp knife and just cut the deckle right where it meets the zimmerit after it's all dry. And then just with a little piece of scotch tape, I'll um, 
remove the deckle that's moved into the damaged area. So there we are, we've mounted the number two of our 214. And as you see, it almost matches the book as well. Um, what's gonna happen later in the day is I'm gonna take an extremely sharp knife, an X-Acto knife with a brand new blade in it, and just follow the line of the Zimmerit. And this number two will slightly change because obviously the, the top here has to be cut off. But I'm gonna let it harden up completely before I do that. And then, um, like I say, then it matches the other side, 214. And um, anyway, then we're gonna protect it. And what I mean by that is when you have decals that are on the tank, especially in the center like this, you're gonna have to protect them. So what I've done is I've made a little Band-Aid for this one, because we have so much more weathering and layering to do that um, a little bit of uh, paper towel, a little bit of tape, and just fit it over top of your decals like so, because your fingerprints don't want to be all over the decal. So make yourself a little band-aid to protect them because no matter what gentlemen moving forward this this decal is going to be exposed to your handprints for for the whole time of weathering so that could be a week or so so unfortunately with the king tiger it falls and and any piece of armor to be honest anywhere where the turret is like this and the decals are on fairly early you're going to have to do a little jig like this to protect them. So I'm going to let this air dry where I put the second 214 down. Let them air dry and then um, cut the deckel to size and then build my little band-aid. And then I can carry on with the turret as far as the weathering goes. And I never have to worry that my thumbprint or my fingerprints are going to be on the decals because they are delicate. They're sitting on top of Zimmerit, which is another uh, issue altogether. So they're not as firm on a model that you'd like them to be. Now, one of the ways around this for sure is to give my turret at this point a nice little air spray of uh, Tamiya Clear or Tamiya Flat or uh, Tamiya number 35 gloss coat. I could easily give it a that sort of thing. That'll firm up the decals as well on top of it. But you'd still have to build a little Band-Aid, a little jig to... Uh, protect them so anyway that's how I decal like I say the the key takeaway to this operation this morning is definitely putting these pinholes in your decal creating those air exits so that you don't get any silvering and I, and I don't have any silvering I never have I haven't had silvering on a decal in, in years um, ever since I was given this little tip um, and um, now if I was building an automobile or uh, an aircraft definitely go with the gloss route or the semi-gloss route you can also use both methods methods with the holes in the decal as well but it's just a helpful little um, a helpful little hint so now we're gonna move to the rear deck of the King Tiger so I'm going to uh, set it all up here with the colors, put on some scratching, and we'll take it from there. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, so what's going to happen in the rear deck of the tank and, and, and all over the tank, gentlemen, is uh, we're going to put a little filter on here. But before we do that, with acrylic paint, I'm going to add some chipping. And that's the reason why this hatch has not been added to the tank yet um when the when the crew is working on this hatch obviously a huge hatch the um the chipping that's going to take place because of the tools and the things necessary um is going to cause chipping now in real life possibly not um the expectancy and the life expectancy of these tanks isn't too long so and a, a huge amount of chipping isn't necessary. But um, as we know, artistic value is important here. So let's just show, and now I do it a little different than Meg and, and a few of the guys. I 
use a toothpick. I find that just smaller chips seem to come off a little better by not using a 10-0 brush. And I use acrylic paint, and the reason for that is, is that I'm going to um, put oil paints over top of this when I give it a filter. So using acrylic paints at this time is important. And I just take regular circular uh, toothpicks, mix up a little, to me, a lacquer thinner with my color. And the colors are um, XF9 and 24. And, and you can change these up a little bit. As long as you're using XF9 with a darker color, you can use NATO black or olive drab. But I just, you sort of have to become 35th scale when you're doing this. You have to realize that the chips are not going to be very big. And like I say, these guys are dropping crowbars. This door is extremely heavy, so um, using a crowbar to open it is probably pretty common. And I just apply the small amounts of chips, scratches, and they get in there obviously with uh, any tools that obviously a modern day mechanic would use only probably on a bigger scale now because the turret is so huge on a king tiger if you want to practice this practice up in this area because the turret is going to overlap a lot of this area so if you screw up guys it's just going to be hidden as you guys can see i'll grab the turret and you guys can see how the turret overlaps almost a half so it'd be a good idea if you practice up in this end knowing it's going to be covered. And then as you work down and you've, you've done a little bit of practicing on these scratches. And they're minute. The smaller the scratch, the better. And you just do multi multiples of them. And they add up to... See, I'll, I'll put a nice scratch along here. And I don't... Like I say, I don't even know if the camera can even pick up these scratches. But I've seen Mig uh, put them on with a 10-0 brush, and they look awesome. I just don't have his ability to do that. So this little toothpick keeps me in my border of small. And like I say, guys, the back of this tank is going to have way more than say up on a turd and all right so after these dry and I'll just demonstrate say from here back a little filter that's gonna go over and it's it's there's a difference between a pin wash and a filter and, and a wash so um, Dave Forrest and I both normally start off with a with a filter over top of these and then pin wash afterwards so let me um, change paints because I'm gonna switch to oil paints it's only gonna take a minute for me to um, have these dry they're acrylic so as we know they dry rather rapidly so I'll mix the paint and I'll be right with you thanks so much for watching okay gentlemen we're gonna add a filter to the back deck here it's it's going to be over the whole tank but for our series um you're going to apply it to the rest of the tank and i'm going to do it to the rest of my tank off camera but we'll, we'll sort of go sort of from the vents and the fill uh screens back just like i say for filming purposes now i use mig filters um ochre for light sand the number is 1503 if you're going to your local hobby shop. One of the great um, things that MIGS brought out that tank guys aren't used to using are these panel line washes. And they have a green brown that's excellent for German armor. And combined with the two, you can get a really nice effect. I, I stick to the ochre color as a principle, but a little hint of uh, green brown doesn't hurt. So, now these are uh, enamel-based, and as you know, we've put our scratches on with um, 
acrylic so there's going to be no interference whatsoever it's dry Look at that great color. And like I say, tank guys don't necessarily, and owning a hobby shop, I know this for a fact. Um, tank guys are flexible with their purchases as far as moving into um, using model railroad things and, and everything like that. But as far as using panel line washes, I guess it's because of the name. But... Um, Anyway, you can make up a nice filter using these two colors, the combination of the both. So I have in this tray a little bit of just Humbrol thinner. Um, you can use MIGS odorless thinner. You can use um, any hobby thinner that's enamel-based. I have good luck with the Humbrol. All right, so... Basically, gentlemen, I'm going to go over all three colors with the same wash that I've produced here. I'll add just a little more of the ochre color over top of the beigey color, the German yellow. But... Putting it right over top of the green doesn't hurt either, like so. And I'll, and I'll leave it not on that side, as I said, just to show you guys how much um, effect this product actually has. And you're going to hit the recesses, and you're going to hit over top of the green German green color and don't worry about it you're supposed to do that and as you can see it's going into all the recessed lines it doesn't affect the red whatsoever this yellowy ochre color going on top of this red color doesn't doesn't alter it it's still a reddish color A little more brown, green brown inside this crack here. And this panel line wash, guys, honest to God, it's a great color. So don't go up to your local hobby shop with a menu of big products out of Mig's book or something. And because he doesn't have the hobby shop that you frequent doesn't have a certain color, don't worry about it. Just go down into the panel line series that make makes and pick out a similar color there now as you guys know, Dave and I take a long time to paint our tanks. I think it's um, worth the wait. We don't certainly um, get to this three-tone camouflage sort of let's pick a day of the week, a Monday, and the hobby show is uh, on the Friday, and we're going to try and make it. Chances are we're not going to make it. We might if we use a hair dryer and stay up all night, but... Painting and weathering our models take a bit of time. And the reality is it could take me three weeks to, to paint the King Tiger, so to weather the King Tiger. Now, obviously, on filming time, we're not going to do that. We're going to do a lot of this off screen and... And then what you can do, like I say, if if a deadline is important, um, 
bring out a hair dryer. And turn it on low heat. Don't turn it on high heat. Turn it on low heat and speed up the process for drying. But as you can see, this back deck is starting to take place. This little filter is just the first layer of... Because what I'd like to do next time we get together is um, put on the fuel stains and the oil spills and gunk that also is added to the rear deck of this tank. And the great thing is, gentlemen, is we uh, this tank's going to show a lot of things. The rear deck has got to match all the explosion part of this too. So you can't just you know, move forward and, and uh, use the knockout hits as, as, as your, you've got to move your viewers all the way across your whole tank. I mean, this tank is 10 inches long. Don't concentrate just on the shell hits and the camouflage patterns. You're, you're going to have to move your viewer all over this tank. So by doing a hundred percent job everywhere is much more important than, than say just, you know, following a couple of paintings in a book and taking it from there. We're going to spend a lot of time, you know, where the Zimmerit used to be and the, uh, all these rust colors that are coming to play, but we've got to make the rest of the tank look correct as well. So spend a lot of time doing the little things, and as a whole, your model will look fantastic in the end. So if you have any questions, guys, shoot us, Dave and I, an email. Um, we're glad to help, glad to answer your questions, and um, we will see you guys next week, and we'll do the back deck as far as the uh, fuel stains and what have you. So it's always been a pleasure, and we'll talk shortly. Thanks so much.